Hello, everyone, and welcome to week 19 of MSK Unknown Case Series. We have a great case today. Today, you're looking at a coronal T1 fat sat weighted image of the left hip. And this is an MRI arthrogram. So what we've done is we've injected under fluoroscopy dilute gadolinium contrast. So we see contrast distending the left hip joint space. And we do that typically to evaluate for labral tears. We look for intraarticular pathology. So, you know, maybe a ligament within the hip, uh, you know, things that are within the intraarticular space that we don't see in a conventional MRI hip. So it's a very exquisite and neat study to evaluate intraarticular structures uh, and the joint is distended so we can see those intraarticular structures much better. So that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing a coronal T1 fat side image through the left hip here. And the question I have for you guys is what's the most likely diagnosis? Is this a labral tear? Is this a case of labral detachment? Is a transverse ligament torn or is a ligament of teres torn? What's the most likely diagnosis here? Give you a minute to take a look at this. So the answer here is this is a case of a labral detachment. So if we take a look here, this dark triangular structure here, this is the labrum, right? This is the superior aspect of the labrum. And the labrum is a fibrocartilaginous structure, so it's going to be dark on all MRI sequences. So if there is, in fact, a labral tear, we'd expect contrast to go into the substance of the labrum. We don't see that here. So the, the labrum itself is not torn. But what is this is a case of a labral detachment because the labrum should be situated right here at the labral chondral junction. But in fact, we have contrast imbibing between the cartilage of the acetabulum and the labrum itself. And we should never see that. So the fact that we have contrast extending at the labral chondral junction, separating the, you know, the bone and the cartilage of the acetabulum with the labrum, this indicates a labral detachment. Now, the ligament of teres is this structure right here. It goes into the fovea capitis. It's this dark linear structure that goes into the mid femoral head of the fovea capitis and connects with the transverse ligament right here, right? And the transverse ligament bridges, you know, the anterior and the posterior rim of the acetabulum. And that also is not torn here. So this is a nice example of what a labral detachment would look like on an MRI arthrogram. So remember that the normal labrum in the hip is much different than that labrum in the shoulder. So in the shoulder, the labrum is 360 degrees. It, it is, it, it goes around circumferentially around the entire glenoid, right? Which is 360 degrees, but in the hip, the labrum is not 360 degrees, it's actually 270 degrees. It runs along the extent of the acetabulum from the anterior rim of the acetabulum to the posterior rim of the acetabulum. And the last 90 degrees is formed by the transverse ligament, right? The transverse ligament bridges the anterior rim of the acetabulum with the posterior rim of the acetabulum. So that's an important distinction when we're looking at MRI hip arthrograms and MRI shoulder arthrograms. Now, signal within the substance of the labrum itself, if you, see, if you see contrast going into the substance of that triangle, that indicates a labral tear, which is not what we saw on this study. We saw, um, you know, a labral detachment. Now, labral tears, if they are present, they are often associated with femoral acetabular impingement, and that's a morphological abnormality of either the femoral head or neck or the acetabulum that results in impingement of bone, cartilage, or labrum, right? There's two types of FAI that we know about. So one is the CAM type of femoral acetabular impingement, which means there's an osseous protuberance at the femoral head and neck junction or lack of offset at the femoral head and neck junction that can predispose to early anterior superior labral tears, early arthritis, especially in young people, and early chondral issues. The other type or the pincer type of FAI or the pincer type of femoral acetabular impingement is usually related to over coverage of the acetabulum, right? So typically we measure a lateral center edge opening angle, opening angle. If that angle is more than 40 degrees, that suggests pincer type of FAI. So it's over coverage of the acetabulum and that can also predispose to early osteoarthritis and uh, extensive labral tearing. The opposite problem of pincer FAI is actually DDH or de developmental dysplasia of the hip where there's under coverage of the acetabulum with respect to the femoral head, right? So DDH is under coverage of the acetabulum and pincer type of FAI is over coverage of the acetabulum. Now, in this case, this was a case of labral detachment. We had signal at the labral chondral junction. When you have signal at the labral chondral junction, that indicates a labral detachment, not necessarily a labral tear. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please join us next time for another very high yield MSK unknown case. Thank you so much for your attention.